please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, welcome back. We keep talking about how this is a big bull market and one stock that represents that is Gujarat Alkalis. The stock has been up, um, up and about in trade of late. It's gained 45% in just three months. It's gained 129% in one year. There's a buzz of caustic soda prices rising and that is uh, something that could perhaps be leading to this move as well. PK Gera, the MD of Gujarat Alkalis, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Gera, good morning. Thanks for joining in. If you can just tell us about the caustic soda prices, uh, what the trend is looking like over the next say uh, three to six months and how would that impact a company like yours good morning thanks for taking me with you and uh, this morning well yes caustic soda prices are historically high and uh, the reasons as i see is in china's and uh, europe because in china the production that we used to see and dumping we used to have and of course the, that that has reduced quite a f and minimata convention has compelled the europeans to try to shift their plants from the traditional technology to membrane technology which our company and entire chloroalkyl industry in india had adopted long back mm -hmm. so the result is that there is a very good market and we are taking advantage of that mm. and uh, so uh, perhaps investors are also looking at it and rewarding it mm. because uh, our performance has been good for other reasons as well because we are controlling our cost significantly energy is the major cost and we have installed more than 200 megawatt of uh, wind energy where, the, where we could reduce the cost as well okay uh, good morning mr gera and thank you very much for your patience as well uh, what was the price increase in the second half or maybe I should say third quarter compared to the first half and therefore how much might margins benefit in the second half for you more than well, the, the third, first half? Third, third half I think third half has been yeah. a very good price okay. regime for us and it, it, it has been increasing so, now no, if you could give numbers, some numbers uh, okay, uh, what what was being sold mm. at uh, 32,000 mm. a ton, let, let's say in uh, May, is now exceeding 45,000 a ton, mm. right? Uh, 44 varies, you know, you okay. can't say an absolute price, it's not MRP here, mm. you know, you deal sure. with various... So some 30% rise uh -huh. in prices? Yes, okay. about... Uh, 32 to 45, yes, yeah. okay. you can say sure. 50%. Okay. Mr. Gera, I mean, good morning. But max. I'm, talking, I'm talking about the max. Sure. I mean, deals are going on at 43, mm. 42 also, 38 as well. Mm. But it all depends, you know. If somebody is taking for a uh, huge quantity on a long term, mm. we give offer a different deal. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Gera, good morning. That was my question actually because how many of these deals are long term in nature? Because is there a risk that while FY18 in this case looks good, but then FY19, because the base effect then goes up, uh, uh, you know, uh, it becomes bad again. Is this a bit of a yearly play or mm. can you have a three or four year sort of uh, a consistent uptick? No, I, I really don't think it will last longer okay. than maybe in June. This June is max. By that time, China is going to put its act together. Europeans yes. are going to come back with their membrane technology uh, cells on the on, on screen. Your, uh, America even had a problem a uh, few months back. So, so this, this is a very temporary phenomenon. I don't foresee, right, right now, we are also facing a problem of water, for example, in the Hedge, the Narvada River, the, because of the dam or the Narvada Dam. The water in the Narvada River is uh, not that much. So As we a can't, result, chloride so, content are going high. So, so obviously, so, that means you can't extrapolate uh, the, the, this quarter and the next couple of quarters in terms of uh, a trend. Yes, I agree. Oh. It is not possible and it, it should not be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, caution is my word for all my uh, future. So, and Mr. Gera, we are trying. I mean, yeah. uh, even when the Chinese production does come back, what kind of a base do you think caustic prices could hold? I mean, are we looking at 35,000, 38,000 or do you think it could fall further than that? No, it will, it will stabilize around 35, 38 types. Okay. And that's my expectation till after June. Okay. okay. All right. 
Uh, well, uh, therefore, you know, if you can give us a general idea as to how much revenues can rise for the second half and uh, what is a vague estimate for FY19, only on revenues. No, I mean, I, I thought you mean the, the current quarter, that yes, is the yes. fourth quarter of the... The third the, quarter the plus the fourth quarter, since you would know. I mean, you've, you've been through half of January. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, we are already mid of the January, and uh, we, we, what we are seeing here, at least 20% rise, mm. uh, sorry, 12% 12, 12 rise from mm. uh, over uh, a previous, yes. the same quarter of the previous year. All right. So, okay. so, so like uh, Q4 of the previous year, mm. we can expect at least 12% rise there. Okay. All okay. right. Mr. Gera, thanks a lot for your time today. And Thanks a lot for being so candid as well. Uh, and, you know, for sometimes it's important that in, you know, bull market, especially, if, uh, you know, yes, managements do yes, caution that it's not Thank you. a trend. You know, yeah. It's just a one-year. Point taken, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, it is one-off and people who are investing should understand that. Yes. Uh, what is the investment trade and what is the trade? Okay, let's move on. In fact, you know, we were talking about how the exports have fallen quite a bit as far as the trade deficit numbers are concerned. It's weak cues all around for Indercount Industries as ready-made textile exports have fallen 8%. The company has also been facing problems of negative sales growth, margins have been falling, while demand from the United States has been on the decline. Kailash Lalpuria, the executive director of Indercount Industries, joins in. We also have Ganesh Kumar Gupta, the president of the Federation of Indian Export Organization, who joins in to talk about the industry trends. So let's welcome uh, both the gentlemen on our panel. Uh, Mr. Gupta, I want to start off with you. You know, the export growth, the year-to-date export growth has fallen to almost 12 to 13 percent, and this is despite a favorable base. Uh, what's the sense you're getting about what the trend could look like? Are we, uh, you know, will we continue to see uh, such low growth in exports? Now, see, in month after month, the export growth is uh, there. It's already showing a positive growth in last three months. Because if you, you are talking, you were just talking about the garment. If you see in October, you, we had 40% decline. Then it was 27% in November and 8% in December. Of course, there is a declining trend. But declining trend is getting arrested. But there are many reasons why the garment industry is doing bad, you know. Okay. Uh, because of the protectionism in the least developed countries like Bangladesh, they don't have any duty structure in U.S. and other countries. Then their labor is cheap. Our labors are very expensive, so that is why our garment industry is suffering. Otherwise, uh, if you see our total export in October, uh, April to December is 224 billion. Mm. We are going to reach 300 billion okay. in this financial year, mm. which will be up from the last year. The okay. Last year was 275 billion. Yeah, but Mr. Gupta, you know the. Uh, Pro point is not about the 12% rise in exports. Uh, yeah. The point is global exports are rising by 12 and 15%, and normally we do double of that because our base is small. I mean, the 2003 to 2008 period, if global exports grew by 10%, we grew by 20. If global exports grew by 20, we grew by 30 to 40. This time we are slightly underwhelming in terms of exports, but I'll come to I... you in just a bit. Let me get Mr. Lalpuria in as well. Mr. Lalpuria, this problem with textiles, do you think it is passing? I mean, I can remember at least for the last six months we are reporting a decline in uh, not just slow growth we are reporting an aggregate decline oh. in textile exports ready-made garments no first of all you see we should not view month to month or quarter to quarter we should see exports being seasonal on account of apparel and home textile we should overall see for on an annual basis uh, yeah, Mr. Lalpuria, I have compared the last six months. I have compared July to July, August to August, September to September. I am looking at year-ago numbers. And for the past six months, the numbers uh, for 2017 are showing a decline of 6, 7, 8 percent. Is there a problem? So there is no problem as such. Uh, as you can uh, observe, you know, the, in the U.S. and U EU, particularly, both the markets have recovered. If you look at the retail sales, they, there is a healthy retail sales, both on account of Christmas and Black Friday. And just we are back from Heimtech sale, which is the largest fair for home textile in Frankfurt. We see positiveness in the world textile trade, which is uh, like overall the trade is growing at 3.5%, but to some account, we are not able to plug into the overall global growth, you know, because yeah. of some Indian context 
under Indian context, some of the issues which we are facing currently uh, has to be overcome. So those are being overcome by the government. But what problems? The is it? Uh, the FTA, yeah, you know, Mr. Lalpuriya, yeah. is the are these passing problems like GST? Or are these some longer term problems like we are not part of the global supply chain or there is some FTA agreement uh, which b advantage others and not us? See, definitely the FTA advantage to Bangladesh and Pakistan, particularly in the EU, and now Vietnam has also signed up with EU, are definitely helping them, of course, along with the labor arbitrage which they have. Oh. So, mm. definitely that is uh, affecting the overall textile export. India is a large economy and, you know, there are structural reforms happening in India, mm. which will take some time to, to stabilize. Okay. So, those, some of the factors under Indian context are, you know, are actually, uh, you know, uh, push, putting pressure. Mm. And if this FTA and all other things are sorted out, quickly, we feel that we will be on the growth trajectory which you just uh, commented upon. Mm. Sure. So, uh, Mr. Gupta, I want you to come in on that because you also made the same point about yeah. how pro protectionism and other issues like expensive labor is impacting the sectoral growth. What do you think the government should do now? What would you like to hear from the government in order to solve some of these issues? Now, see, the biggest problem of ours is, first of all, first thing, the rupee is getting strengthened. Secondly, we are already over thousand dollar per capita income, which is WTO is coming in the way of the our uh, incentives. Oh. There is no incentives. Where other countries like uh, least developed countries, they are they are giving all sort of incentives to the industry. So um, then, what you were talking about the global growth? My global is uh, global trade is increasing by 12 percent, and we are now earlier we were 20 percent or 30 percent. Now we are not to that uh, um, mm. uh, in that pace. The reason and there are domestic reasons also and international reasons also. As Mr. Lalpuria has mentioned very correctly, that a lot of uh, things are acting against India. Our labor is uh, labor. Uh, Labor reforms is required because you know in the, we can't have a higher and fire policy, where in other least developed country they have all sort of benefits. Mm. So you know like uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, mm. Vietnam, sure. these are the countries which is coming in the way of the okay. garment export okay. from India. Fair point. All sir. right, gentlemen. Th thanks a lot for your time today. So yes, there is a bit of a problem. No, and it's, it's a little troubling, you know, mm. because textiles employ a lot of people. Yes. It is not only a trade deficit <laughs> issue, which yes. perhaps will be overcome if our software mm. exports did mm. well or and auto ancillaries did well but uh, it's a very labor intensive sector oh, yes, it's a uh, little troublesome yeah but you know the couple of companies though of late have made a bit of a transition from being just pure textile company to gr branded place as well and that's helping by the way the market clearly the themes are playing out it is the one which is surging and just keep an eye on a couple of pharma stocks as well dv's labs uh, is the one where we're seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, buying in fact uh, uh, that's not alone. There are a couple of others as well where we've seen some buying. So a lot of these uh, IT and pharma stocks right now are moving to high point of the day. So good time to get uh, the 10 a.m. trades. Ashwini Gujarat and Rajat Bose now join us for that. Uh, Ashwini, your thoughts first on the on the uh, you know index trade. How has that played out, and uh, what would be your stock calls? See, out of all the banks in the Bank Nifty, only four are higher. So that shows that maybe yesterday's rally was just because there was news on the large components. There has been very little follow through on the bank nifty. Right now, 900 stocks are declining and only 682 are advancing. So this way, you know, you don't get a good feeling about uh, the entire market. Yes, today, you know, it's the day of IT. So if you get long on IT stocks, maybe that does well. But uh, overall, uh, I don't think in terms of the Nifty's progress, we'll be able to make great strides because if banks continue to fall and IT goes up, they kind of cancel each other. In terms of sectors also, half the sectors are lower. Mm. So you know, this is a very uh, funny kind of expansion because on the second day, uh, if we are coming under uh, uh, selling pressure, then you really have to wait for dips to buy. So for the moment, continue with our uh, sh uh, short positions on the bank nifty. It hasn't been able to stay uh, in even the positive territory. 
Similarly, on stocks, uh, I think you can uh, get long on uh, Tech Mahindra. That's a buy with a stop of 550, target of 585. NIT Tech is a buy with a stop of 720, target of 742. <coughs> and Federal Bank has broken below its 200 DMA now. So that's a sell with a stop of 112, target of 100. Okay, but well, some of these cement stocks are surging now. So we spoke about how Prism Cement has broken out of its trading range. It's up about 12%. It now has Heidelberg Cement for companies. So Heidelberg Cement is up 10% and huge volume seen on that particular counter. Uh, Rajat Bose also joins in. Rajat, what stocks would you be buying or selling now? See, I have two pharma stocks and one uh, group, oh, one Tata stock. Uh, all are in the future segment. Tata LXI, I would buy, and the stop loss will be below uh, 1057. It has already moved up, so you can actually push the st uh, stop loss to about 1067 instead of 1057. And 1096 and 1103 would be the revised targets for Tata LXI Jan futures. And Sun Pharma is another stock I would uh, suggest buying in Jan Futures. 577 is the stop loss, 589 and 595 would be the two targets. And Ajanta Pharma, this is also attracting good buying. In fact, the whole pharma lot is actually attracting good buying. So 1531 would be my stop loss, 1556 and 1567 are, would be the two targets. However, if the Nifty fails to take out 10,782, then I would suggest close all long positions uh, at the end of the day, irrespective of their levels. Okay. Well, just a couple of more stocks uh, uh, for you, Ashwini. Um, uh, Delta Corp, is there any fresh trade? Uh, uh, I guess uh, in this morning, people would have, en wanting to enter, would have already seen it up 4%. Is there still a trade left? And specialty restaurants, does it have a trade? See, it did open higher, but uh, you should hold on to long positions with a, you know, 310 type of stop. Okay. Uh, so uh, it remains in a strong uptrend, and uh, while, you know, today it may not see further gains, but uh, overall, uh, if you hold on to long positions, you are likely to make uh, money. Mm. On specialty restaurant, uh, you know, it's kind of moving sideways, mm -hmm. not doing too much. So I don't think there's a, a great trade, trade yeah. out there. The trade seem to be on, uh, you know, long side on IT and cement okay. and on the short side on uh, oil marketing and uh, possibly even financials. Okay. Ashwini, just one more stock check. Havels, which had a big move uh, late evening uh, uh, and today also continuing. <laughs> See, Havels, I think, has hit uh, new highs and that uh, process continues. I think it's slowly getting out of that range which it moved in all year long, 440 to about 540. So with a 535, 540 type of stop, I think at some point you should see 600, 620 on Havels. Right. <coughs> Gentlemen, we'll leave it at that. We have lots of more questions uh, for an hour later with you all. Uh, Rajat and Ashmini, thanks a lot for joining us. We're concentrating now on the IPO space and uh, the new company. Uh, that is uh, uh, coming to the market is Nugen uh, Software Technology. Uh, it's a 425 crore IPO opens today, will close for subscription on uh, 18th. Divakar Nigam, Chairman and Managing Director, Nugen Software Technologies, joins in to tell us more about their company. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Nigam, good morning, thanks much. Uh, if you can tell us, uh, you know, how you distinguish yourself from the tech space, which is fairly crowded. You service largely Indian companies? Uh, good morning, Lata. Uh, we are a very unique software product company. We are not a service company mm. like most of the other companies. So, and we sell our pro product in 60 countries. Oh. So the same product gets sold. So we have three products, ECM, BPM, and CCM. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have about 450 active uh, installations worldwide. Mm. Uh, these installations include banks, insurance companies, uh, BPOs, um, healthcare organizations, mm -hmm. and government. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you name okay. some? These are used in a mission critical mode. Can you name some clients? I mean, which insurance, which governments? Okay. 
ICICI Bank, Access Bank, Yes Bank, okay. all of these are our users, IDFC Bank. Okay. So almost all private sector banks and many uh, uh, public sector banks mm. are our users. Okay. And they use it for uh, things like loans, account opening, okay. uh, trade finance and things like that, sure. which are really mission critical for them. Okay, so since this uh, whole so financial segment of, uh, uh, is growing quite a bit, uh, you have been doing about a 20% revenue uh, compounded growth over the last many years. Uh, do you think that you can do better than that over the next few years? Uh, yes. See, we are. if you really see this uh, segment of ECM, BPM, CCM has been growing by about 10-12%, which is much more than the IT landscape. Also, but we have been operating only the India, Middle East, Africa, and APAC market, which, is, which amounts to about 25% of the total landscape. Mm. For last one and a half years, we have entered the US market, mm. which is doing very well, mm. and that amounts to about 50%. Okay. So I think the growth potential out there is pretty huge. Okay. Uh, we have been able, in one and a half year, we have been able to get about 20 very, very marquee customers mm. in US. Mm. And uh, we have a huge pipeline there. So, so if we start winning big in US, then this trajectory can be very, very different. Okay, your, your growth trajectory, as Sonia was saying, is about 20-25%. Uh, is that a maintainable run rate? 20-25% yeah. uh, is very easy to do. Okay. But I think we can be even bigger. All right. Okay. That's Going good forward. to hear. How because we will start covering another 50% market. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just had a question on how you uh, would be trying to protect your intellectual property because, you know, that is a big concern in industries like yours. There are also um, several, uh, the possibilities of several infringement claims by other companies as well. Uh, that could maybe lead to higher costs. These are just some risks I'm outlining for the industry. How do you tackle with these? See, the, uh, basically, in an enterprise software market, there is very little chance of piracy. Because if, if we, our products are being used for mission-critical applications, nobody will pirate them. In fact, uh, the whole thing is gentleman's licensing, in the sense that we go in at the year and we say, okay, you are using these many licenses, please give us the uh, royalty towards it, and they pay us. So I don't think piracy is a big issue. Patent infringement, a small, small patent infringements are there, which are typically lawyer companies do all this, and they settle for $10,000 and $15,000. Mm. So I think that's not a worry, worrisome area. Okay. Uh, well, Mr. Nigam, uh, if it is that, then why is it that your margins have fallen in the first half? I mean, uh, you're in your SEBI DRHP, you have given uh, us margins over the last five years. You've been ranging, you know, 22, 19, 19, 12, 16. All good. I mean, the first half is 4%. Uh, I'll tell you, the, our business is seasonal in the sense that the H1 is only 40% and H2 is 60%. And that is primarily because the business gets concentrated into December and March. December for our international customers as that's the year, year ending for them mm. and March for Indian customers for year-ending reasons. Mm. So that revenues are 40 and 60 percent. Okay. While the, and this has been the trend for many, many years. And while the expenses are uh, quite serial, you know, in the okay. sense that it is the costs are in manpower, marketing, mm. so which, which are fixed common. costs. So I think that is the reason that, yeah, those are the fixed costs. That is the reason 20 percent extra mar uh, uh, margins come in the last quarter. Okay. Uh, last half. Okay, sir. So we I will... think we will. We are. If we see H1 to H2 growth, mm. so we are. We are doing well. We are again growing in the same range at 21, 22 percent. Mm. So I think we are. We are on the target. All right. We'll touch base with you later on after listing, uh, Mr. Nigam. Thank you very much for dropping by, and all the very best.